I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Dawncraft. Now, I'm sure many of you guys are wondering, and of course, I'm wondering it too. Wh wh why didn't I talk to the Guildmaster yet? I'm, And I'm kind of curious as well, like, what, what's the Guildmaster going to say now that we have technically beaten the game? I wonder when, like, saved everyone. Uh, Mr. Guildmaster, hello? Apparently, my OG Guildmaster is dead. <laughs> what even happened to this guy? I think we have another Guildmaster. It seems like everyone except for the villagers that I put in here have died. And I've made sure these guys were nice and safe. Oh, actually, this one, this one of my Fletchers. Wait, no, this is my Hunter. My Hunter has apparently passed away as well. No. Ugh. But I guess you can't keep all of the villagers safe. There's always going to be some weird thing that comes and attacks them and can attack them through walls, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, let's see. There's a guild master that I think is up the hill here. Um, unless this guild master is also gone. These buildings are pretty well safe. Yeah, no, this guild master is also gone. Aha! Uh -huh. This guild master is still alive. Hello! I think there is no need to look for eyes anymore. And that is the final conversation that we have with the guild master. Oh, there it goes. So you have defeated the dragon. I suppose that you would make a new ruler of this realm. Congratulations, brave conqueror. You have done everything you could. Now, if you would excuse me. Uh, what? I am sorry, I doubted you. <laughs> you are truly one of a kind. End of dialogue. So that's, that's literally it. We have successfully done all of the quests for the guild masters. The guild masters no longer want to speak to me because I am now a filthy peasant and they just don't want to, uh, they just don't want to communicate with me anymore <laughs> after I had done all their tasks. Oh man, that is hilarious. That is actually quite hilarious. Now with all of this being said and done, uh, I am far from done, I think. Uh, there's still a lot of bosses and a lot of things that I actually want to to try out. Um, so inside of our quest, right? Um, a lot of this is the quest rewards that led down the tier. This is our all of our tiers of bosses that we went through originally. And these are apparently bosses that we could get randomly, or at least maps to them that are pretty random. This system has been quite random in my opinion and uh, was very, very difficult. I didn't actually get but one uh, quest from a random villager that led me anywhere with a map. So uh, as far as that system goes, kind of unfortunate, but we do have this and some of these are definitely broken. Uh, this is like the, the netherite monstrosity. We did beat this guy in the nether. And as you can see, it's a little quest mess up where it's one in a hundred. Uh, we did complete that. We also did fight the fire giant as well. However, that quest did not complete. Uh, and I also fought the fire dragon and we literally slaughtered the fire dragon and it did not complete as well. Um, and, but there's several other things in here that I know I haven't done. Uh, there's like a summoner. Uh, there's also the Dame uh, Fortra. No idea what these are. Um, and they don't give any description either, which is kind of unfortunate on these. I really wish the PAX devs would have uh, put in some sort of description that kind of outlines how you even get started with some of these. Like I know how the Frost Maw works, but like some of these, I have no idea. Um, but what I'm, I'm definitely wanting to try is this right here. Uh, the more Morazuna, but I have no idea how to pronounce that. Idol of the Drowning. Um, let me, like, I'm really gonna figure this out. Apparently it's pronounced Morazun. Morazun. Uh, that's what I'm going with, which apparently is Japanese. I didn't know that. Uh, and translates to, I don't have luck in English. That's, that's horrible sounding. <laughs> um, so I, I, yeah, uh, Moraz, Moraz Einzun. Uh, that's my, that's the best interpretation I can do. Um, the Idol of the Drown though. I, I kind of know where this thing is located and I want to check it out. Um, I do know cause it's also part of the same mod, the same dungeon mod as the battle towers or the battle tower mod that we did here. Um, and, uh, that's going to be pretty neat. And I want to dive into that. And you guys have also asked and wanted me to do that as well. For some reason, I can't interact with you. What is wrong, my dude? How, we're frozen, apparently. Uh-huh. That's why we were frozen, because this guy was generating a map. 
Hmm, I do have a compass, and I do have emeralds. So I will actually buy that, because I don't think I have that map. So this guy has been offering maps, which has been kind of nice. Uh, but outside of that, I've not gotten any from these quests. Now we can, we can definitely see if we can find this. This is a uh, bazaar, which is like a trading outpost sort of thing. Um, we'll see, we'll see. But first, I want to go to the underwater battle tower. I think that's going to be pretty neat. And you guys have asked me to do it. Now, if you've come across this particular structure right here, this is is the battle tower, the water battle tower that is related to that boss. And I believe we just need to go through the underground here and complete this. And we get depth dropper in this, which makes it so like swimming up is pretty difficult. Um, but I believe we also get water breathing. Yeah, we get water breathing and depth dropper. And I have no idea what depth the dropper does. But if this is like the other battle tower, we kind of just need to break through things. Yeah. And we need to take these guys out. It is so hard to fight underwater. Um, but I'm also giving myself night vision. So there's a chest and it is locked at the moment. There should be spawners in this. We just have to slowly but surely break things, I guess, to find them. Uh, they're going to be probably red, just like the ones that we had found before. Aha! Uh -huh. They are inside the pillar. As you can see right there, I just broke one of the spawners. And we're still missing another one. So they're inside these pillars. Just got to find where they're at. I don't know if they're going to be in all of the pillars like this. So I can definitely say that the depth dropper effect is pretty rough. And there's another spawner, because these guys are up in the air. Okay. And now we should be able to open this. And we're looking for the same keys. So this takes us in to the second area. Which, of course, taking these guys out and taking damage from them is no problem at this point. We just have to make sure we maintain our water breathing. Oh, boy. Getting a breath of air is going to be a problem. And it forces us down on the ground like this, which can be kind of a problem. So I think I found the eye I need. There we go. Oh my goodness. And no key on the next level. Interesting. Fighting underwater is going to be the funniest thing I've done thus far. There's a spotter down. It's just, it's just so goofy looking. Look at this. <laughs> it's just like, what are we even fighting sometimes as I'm landing on all this weird stuff? I mean, at least this is a pretty good way to farm Nautilus shells, I guess. A, I mean, it's a really good way to farm knowledge shells. But we got our first key. Look at all the books and everything on the ground. And apparently an undead army has <laughs> spawned in. I have no idea what's going on at this point. The good part about this being underwater here is these pillars are pretty much where everything sort of spawns. And so it's, it's quite predictable, actually, to figure out where the spawners are compared to the normal battle towers. So it's not that bad, especially once you have some pretty decent armor be able to pop in here and find good gear now this area is a bit challenging as uh it, it's not like the mobs are bothering me it's just like moving around because we have that depth dropper which drops me down to the bottom of the ocean that's pretty rough because it's like it's really hard to fight against that you can't swim up you have to use like the dash ability from your spell book to do this and i hope we find the key here because i've only gotten two keys no key. So we move on to the last level. And there's a few spawners down here, as you can see. But yeah, this is where a lot of the mayhem is at. But I don't have a key to really finish this off down here, I don't think. All I have is one key. Um, okay. So, <laughs> I guess I can go ahead and finish these guys off that have spawned. Man, the sounds, the sounds are the worst. I don't know if there's anything worse in Minecraft than the sounds of these guys. Oh, man, guardians are the worst. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Uh, let's just, okay, I guess we just need a key because that's all we found was one key, one singular key. 
And do I use it down here? It took my key. There's a chest there. And this chest is locked. What? Did it do anything? We didn't get any other key. And I opened all the chests. I'm curious because we activated the key down at the bottom. I'm going back through and checking, making sure I checked every chest. And there was only one key because I thought the last battle tower I did, there was multiple keys. If I remember correctly. Yeah, there were multiple keys. I think there was, I ended up with like four and I only needed like three or something to activate it. Yeah, because as you can see, I did, I went through every floor here. Because, I mean, this battle tower actually wasn't too difficult. I think the hardest part is going to be finding another one if we don't have enough keys and hopefully returning back to this one. Yeah, as you see... Nothing. We found a single one. Hmm. And this leads us out. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's where the army's at. Oh boy, this army is going to be gone very quickly. This is the only place I guess they could spawn. Sorry, Mr. Horse. Oh, goodness. But does that mean with the obelisk, nothing? Nope, nothing spawning. We just are dealing with a, with an undead army at the moment. Look at the undead army. They straight up, they get Frostwalker and they just get to walk on the water. Wow. That's cheating. So after defeating another undead army, we get another goodie bag, which gives me uh, a couple of cloths. So as I look for another tower, I, I gotta say, I couldn't imagine doing that battle tower with our starting gear. Like there is no way, even the tower that I did in the overworld, there's no way I could have used that particular gear. I would have been annihilated specifically just from the guardians alone would have just wrecked me. It's kind of, and it would have wrecked our gear before having mending and having a backpack that allowed me to uh, yeah, do all this. It's kind of crazy, like, once you go to the nether, how everything just sort of opened up in this pack. Probably should have went to the nether a lot sooner. By the way, while I was looking, I just wanted to just, for, for some, you know, laughs, I just want to see how quickly we can take on the Sentinel Knight, because this guy took us a little bit to do. And, um... Yeah, that's kind of funny, actually. I did find another one, but it says you feel vibrations under the sea, and I have a feeling these moths, yeah. These guys are not going to make this tower easy. I have a feeling this is going to be impossible because we're hit with the frozen effect. Like, I mean, we're not taking actual damage from it, so... Maybe it won't be so bad, but my goodness. Yeah, we're, we're technically dying because of this. <laughs> oh man, I hope we find more keys. So after completing this tower, for whatever reason, I did summon another undead army. I guess after you kill enough drowned, it spawns one. Um, but yeah, after all of this, I did get three keys. So... I don't know what was wrong with the first dungeon, but we're going to head back and we're going to see if we can't potentially open up and uh, fight that boss because I definitely don't want to fight it here. This is this is like the worst place to try and fight this thing. So after getting another key, I'm back at the other one, the one that's by my base, and it does show that there is like another slot here. And as soon as we activate it, it goes to this. And are we supposed to slot something into that? Huh. I didn't get anything else out of any of these chests. So I just did some research and apparently the eye that we got from the land tower is actually the eye that we need to open this. So we needed the two keys and now we need to slot the eye here no way is that really what we're actually needing okay this is gonna be pretty cool if i can get this to work so this apparently was what we got after defeating 
the first boss, which was in the overworld tower that we did several episodes ago. But I didn't know that we were going to need this ultimately for this massive arena that you see here. Look how cool this arena is. I'm honestly more excited to see if this tower just gets destroyed. Okay. So if this is the case, oh, it is. Oh, okay. 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 What is this guy doing? He can swim so fast. Um, that was also too fast. Okay, I wasn't expecting that to be that fast. Um, but the chest is still locked. Why is the chest still locked? We literally just... Idol returned to the void. Do we use this to open it? The floor starts to crumble. I can't get into the chest. I mean, at least I got this eye. And that apparently goes towards the next battle tower? I have no idea. But I am excited to see this thing crumble. I did break the bottom here. Because I thought there was going to be something more that spawned out of this. But apparently not. The battle tower's not crumbling. Interesting. Now, it for some reason didn't come crumbling down. I have no idea why. It's still standing. But I noticed right next to it is this thing. And this is an ocean monument. And we can't do anything really here. Um, we can't break blocks or anything like that until we have defeated the guardians. But look how crazy this thing looks. This is entirely different. But we might as well defeat the guardian, the guardians, while we're here. Is that a trident? There's just a free trident laying around. I'll take it. It's just a free trident. If only this was how it was. Okay, so we need to figure out... It's probably a bunch of puzzles here. We need to figure out how to actually get... Oh, there's one of the guardians. So let's take out the guardian. That was pretty quick. That was actually one of the bosses that we needed to take out, technically. But normally there's three guardians inside of this building. But look how cool this is. If if Minecraft <laughs> was uh, was built by the community, this would probably be what the uh, these temples would look like. These this is this is beautiful looking. So over here should be another one, but we have to make it through this maze. It's an actual maze. Oh no. And not the billy kind. Yep, this is a full-blown maze. Okay, so it's not down there. Not down here. I'm pretty decent with mazes. It... Is it up here? Oh, this takes us to a different level. Ooh. This is interesting. But that's a... Oh, it's not a dead end. Oh, here it is! Hello! Get annihilated. And there we go. That one's down. Oh, wow. That made a lot of awful noise. Um, so, yeah, in this area, actually, the mining fatigue isn't what prevents us from, from breaking blocks. Like, because if we undo mining fatigue, can we mine now? No. So, like, we have no effects on... But we still can't mine these blocks for whatever reason. So, oof, this is uh, pretty rough. Actually, am I able to even get out of this area? I mean, I'm sure I can. Oh, this probably takes... No, that takes us up. Ah, we have to go through here. Yeah, there it goes again. More mazes. So if we keep going... Oh, this isn't good. This is not good at all. This blocks this whole thing off. Um. <laughs> I don't know if that was intended. We did get three guardian bags. That dropped some fish. 
Some Elder Guardian Spikes, which can be used to make a trident. Interesting. But I'm sort of stuck because of the world generation. What I could try and do is use my TNT. That doesn't work either. TNT just doesn't seem to work on this. Huh. That's not good. Uh, we, I don't... We might be able to dash down. Whew. There we go. I was at least I was able to dash, but I could I couldn't imagine getting stuck down here and just ultimately drowning because because you can't break any blocks. So I believe this right here is the final guardian, but we can't get into it. I don't believe. Yeah, because we we can't break blocks fast enough. Huh? And we can't get into it because I think it's completely blocked off now. And yep. There's the monstrosity that's blocking the entire progression of this thing. What a bummer that that spawned right into this. So I just went back to the base and I want to try something here that might actually allow me to progress through this. Um, what I want to do is put TNT right here. Surround it. This actually might not work because there's some waterlogged blocks right nearby but surround it like that and then use a lever to set it off oh no that's not gonna work is it um what if i maybe <laughs> here i am trying to circumvent all of these different ways what if i put tnt anywhere over here honestly that would kind of help um, this right here is probably the best place. Make sure we get this. And I just need to light this while having it covered. And see if that will cause an explosion. Because we're trying to prevent the water from getting to it. So, flint and steel. We light it. Place it. Will that work? Oh, it does. Yes. Okay, so that means I can get further down here. And I might be able to make more TNT this way. Yes, I just wonder if this block right here is going to cause problems. It might. It might, because it's probably waterlogged. Um, but, either way. Oh, I can't place it in. But the way that just the raw TNT seemed to be kind of working. Oh, man. It's just a pain that this is in here. This looks like there's no water there. There we go. And I just ended up placing blocks that didn't get broken. Well, that's a bummer. I'm going to grab more TNT, get back to that spot in there, and see if we can't do it from the inside. You know, I've been trying to do this all wrong because we have a tier three spell book and I haven't made any of the glyphs, but intangible is actually something that can get me inside this building and honestly get me into any building, uh, believe it or not. So... Why not use this spell, yet again becoming even more powerful of a god and learning intangible. Um, so, let's go ahead and learn this. It actually takes nothing to do this. So, whatever we touch, or actually, let's just do projectile. Whatever we projectile to, uh, we can use intangible. And it's going to make the blocks where we can pass through them. And so, if we give it like a 3x3... Three three, we should be able to just walk right through and the blocks will return shortly after. That's going to be awesome. And then we can extend time and make the delay last a little bit longer. <laughs> Let's head back and do this. This is going to be so goofy, but here we go. And we are technically through. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And no longer will we have to live oh man with that effect hitting us we should now be able to break blocks maybe yes oh man all of that just to kill the third guardian and look at this mess this was the entrance and we have this thing in our way this pirate ship what an awful thing but i guess now it doesn't matter because we have the ability to pretty much go into any area, regardless of if it's protected or not. 
because this will open up and allow us to go in. That is awesome. Yeah. Oh, so this is double paned glass. That is why. But there we go. I mean, honestly, this spell I should have made a while ago because this this honestly will break a lot of stuff. I guarantee there's a lot of things that you're not meant to get into right away. And well, that's a tier three spell, so I guess you wouldn't get into it right away. But still, it's that's really powerful and it will work with villagers and stuff, too. So you, if there's a mob in the way, you could just technically bury them in the ground and then it'll refill and well cause damage which is kind of funny yeah i think it'll uh it works on this it worked on me yeah see they fell in and now they're stuck <laughs> now i know today's episode was filled with a lot of confusion and well it's understandable whenever there's very little documentation on a lot of these mods and uh well it just is bound to happen in that case but i did have a lot of fun and i hope you guys did too and i i loved the way some of these buildings looked that is honestly one of the uh, the coolest parts of exploring in, and adventuring is seeing some of these really cool builds that other people have made uh, and that have put into mod packs. This is really, really neat. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to smack that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. And of course, guys, uh, it is now time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks that goes out to Scuzzy. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, like I said before, leave a good old subscribe if you would. And uh, also let me know down in the comments below, again, what you would like to see me take on next. Uh, because there's still gonna be a few more episodes, of course, of this as uh, I still want to defeat some of these really cool bosses that are in here, so long as I can figure out a way to do so. And that's a, that's one of the, the problems I'm fighting. Uh, but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.